Hey everyone, you thought the series was over, but I've just got one more bonus video in this DP600 exam preparation course. I really wanted to bring you some top tips for the exam, so we're not going to be covering any of the technical content, but I just have some words of advice or some tips that might help you when you're actually doing the exam itself. So this is the bonus round of our course plan. If you're just joining us here in this video, well, I recommend you go back through all of the last 12 videos because that's where we cover most of the content. And I wanted to talk to you about booking your exam, preparing for the exam, some advice for during the exam, and then also what you should do after the exam as well. So when you're booking the exam, if you've used the AI skills challenge voucher, then make sure you schedule your exam before the expiration date. And that means you have to schedule the exam to be conducted before that expiration date. Now, I think that was the 24th of June, 2024, but double check that in your own emails that you have that date there. Now, if you don't have that AI skills voucher that was given away maybe two months ago now, then you can get a 50% off voucher for the exam by completing the cloud skills challenge. I'll leave a link to that in the description. So if you want 50% off the DP600 exam and you still haven't booked your exam yet or you still haven't got a voucher for it, you can use that there. And I've said this before, but I always recommend, if possible, to take the exam in person. Now you might have heard there's a lot of horror stories for people that take it online, you know, have an online proctoring experience and they're very very busy and there's always problems with technology and you know you have to clear your desk and clear your room and there's all these kind of hurdles that if you can avoid by going to an in-person test centre I would very much recommend doing that. Appreciate not everyone lives near a test centre but if you do or you can commute to one just for the exam, I would definitely recommend that. It reduces a lot of stress. You just walk in, take the exam and walk out. So preparing for the exam. Well, obviously you can go back through these videos and look in the school community as well. I've got lots of notes in there. The reason I kind of created those was to help people who are, you know, just about to take the exam. They can go through the key points and just make sure they remember everything as they go through each of the different sections in that school community. And if you're still not sure about anything in any section of the exam, you can dig into the further learning resources that I've linked in every section there. Now, one of the key resources that I would definitely use when you're preparing is the official practice assessment for the DP600 exam. And again, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now you can go through this multiple times. I think it's a 50 question assessment, but you can refresh the page and you get fresh questions when you refresh. Now, I don't know exactly how many different questions there are in that exam set, but there's definitely more than 50. So go through that practice assessment numerous times to get a really good idea of the types of questions that you're going to be asked and to highlight any gaps in your knowledge. Another really good resource is the Microsoft Learn Together series that's kind of been running side by side with this series. I think we started around the same time. I think they finished maybe a week or two ago. Now this is a really good series delivered by Microsoft MVPs. So there's lots and lots of content that you can go through there to dig in a bit deeper about any of the aspects in the DP600 study guide. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the description. As well as the technical content from Microsoft MVPs, they've also got a few lectures or a few videos that describe to you what the exam entails. So if you've never taken a Microsoft exam before, I would definitely recommend watching some of those videos. I think they're at the end of that series where they walk through types of questions you might get, how to prepare for it, how much time you have, all of that kind of stuff, just so that you can enter that exam as prepared as possible. Now, as well as that, there's lots of other great content from other people in the community. Definitely recommend Data Mozart, Nicola's blog there and also YouTube channel as well now. The Data Guy newsletter on LinkedIn, something managed by Abu Bakr. He basically collated a lot of learning resources for each section of the study guide. Definitely recommend that. Similarly, there's a post on Serverless SQL by Andy Cutler, which is basically a guide to the exam as well. And in there, he highlights a lot of resources for the exam as well. So during the exam, I would say don't spend too long on one question. If you get stuck, then you can flag it for review and you can come back to it at the end if you have time. Now, a lot of people are saying that there's not much time in this exam. 
you have 100 minutes to actually do the exam. And there's normally around 55 to 60 questions. And some of the questions are very wordy. So it might take you 30 seconds or even a minute just to try and understand what they're asking you. So if you get stuck and you don't know the answer, don't waste too long on one question. Just flag it for review and come back to it at the end. Now you will receive at least one case study question where you'll be given a lot of context about a business and you'll be asked a series of questions afterwards. Now, I definitely recommend that you use a pen and paper to draw the case study architecture as you're reading that question, because normally these case studies, they're very complex and they'll describe a scenario to you. For example, our oh, company has capacity one and in capacity one, there's workspace one and workspace two. And in workspace one, there's lake house one and lake house. When you're reading this, you don't really take any of it in. So I definitely recommend drawing it as you're reading it. This can really help you when you go forward to answering the questions because you don't have to keep on going back to the, the case study, the context when you're answering the questions. You can just refer to your, your diagram. If you don't know an answer, guess. You don't lose marks for an incorrect guess, so you might as well. And bear in mind that the questions were created many months ago. So I don't think they've updated the questions since it was first came out. So bear that in mind. So a lot of the more recent features, they are not going to be the correct answer because they weren't in general availability when the questions were created. So bear that in mind. Now, a lot of the questions I would argue are ambiguous or at least the answers. So what you have to bear in mind or try and keep asking yourself is what do I think that the Microsoft examiner is expecting to see here. So don't try and be too clever. Always think about what are Microsoft trying to teach us about Microsoft Fabric? How do they want us to use the platform? And always answer your questions with that in mind. So after the exam, so you will know if you pass or fail directly after the exam, you get the results straight after. Now, if you fail, I would say don't be too hard on yourself. Honestly, it's a very, very tough exam. It expects you to be familiar with a very wide range of topics, right? For starters, SQL, PySpark, M, DAX, plus all of the planning stuff and all of the lake houses, data pipelines, data flows. All of this stuff is a very wide ranging exam that you need to be at least familiar with. So if you do fail, don't be too hard on yourself at all. And if you pass, then well, congratulations, you can be very, very proud of your achievement. So that is all I have. Thank you so much for joining me in this series and the best of luck for all of you that are taking the exam in the future. Thank you so much for joining me in this series. I'm going to be taking a short break now and I'll be back on the channel with more videos teaching fabric in the future. Thank you.